but this is one of the coolest I've ever seen. This game is going to ship early next year from Bungie, and this is the first time anybody has ever seen it. It's the first time they've debuted it. And so I'm very happy to uh, welcome on the stage Jason Jones, who is the co-founder of Bungie and the Halo project lead. Halo is the name of this game, and we're going to see, for the first time, Halo. Welcome, Jason. Thank you. Yep. Everything you're about to see is being rendered in real time on a Macintosh using OpenGL. Back in 1999, Steve Jobs was on stage at Macworld showing off the latest and greatest products from Apple at the time. During the presentation, Jobs began to discuss new developers coming over to develop games exclusively on Mac. One of those small studios was known as Bungie, and they were about to debut a game that over the next two years would go through many developmental changes to not only the game, but to the studio itself. However, at the end of the day, this small studio was developing a game that would steal the hearts of many gamers, including myself. A game that would be held in high regards by many. A game that will go down in history as one of the best video games of all time. That game was known as Halo. Flag returned. In the year 2000, the boys over at Microsoft were scouting for small game studios to partner with for the launch of the new game console they were releasing, and around a year's time, codenamed the Direct Xbox, which was eventually shortened to just Xbox, because big names equal no remembering unless you're Zach Galifianakis or Mark Rebier. Shout out to you two, you guys are fucking awesome at what you do. Anyways, on June 19th, 2000, Microsoft had announced that they had acquired Bungie and that they would become part of the team that was going to work on games for the Xbox. Halo was officially going to launch as an Xbox launch exclusive. It was also decided over time that the game would take on a first person shooter type of game style, which at the time was a genre that, at least on console, was more dead than an iPhone 4 in the year 2021, which by the time this video is out will be an outdated joke, because I'm writing this joke in 2021, but by the time that this video is out, it will be 2022, and I will be a year closer to dying, but I think you get my point. Up until Halo, no one had really figured out how to make first person shooters work on the controller. Everyone, for the most part, thought the only way you could do FPS was with a mouse. Due to the precision of a mouse and aiming and all the damn math involved, I'm making sure that you're aiming right, and I failed math, so I don't know why I know how to aim, but I guess that's just one of God's miracles, am I right? But the boys at Bungie got it down, and Alakazam, they mastered what is basically the industry standard controls for first-person shooters on console to today. But before Bungie was acquired by Microsoft, they had a little problem when it came to money. You see, prior to the development of Halo, Bungie had released a game known as Myth 2, which I guess you could say had a minor problem. You see, Myth 2 shipped with a glitch where the game would completely wipe the contents of the directory it was installed to, aka, surprise fucker, you just lost all your documents and pictures of your family vacation where your dad spilled ketchup on the family poodle named Oscar, and Oscar was fucking sad. And since this was long before developers could just roll out a little patch like a fucking band-aid, Bungie had to recall all 200,000 copies of the game that had already been produced, leading them to losing somewhere in the 800,000 to a million dollar range, which at the time was like how movies depict teenage kids losing their phone for 30 minutes before they start having withdrawals. Bungie was in debt, and Microsoft was looking to, you know, I'll scratch your back if you scratch ours, mm -hmm -hmm. which this all leads into Ill contested. Both Xbox and Bungie were under some hardcore crunch during 2001. Microsoft was rushing to put together the hardware for their console, which I'm not going to get into because I'm going to make a whole other video on that one. But the boys and girls at Bungie are rushing to get this game together and ready for not only the launch, but also presentations like E3. At E3, there were some small booths, which I like to think that they looked like the old N64s at McDonald's and the little playground area, you know, you'd all gather around and play, whatever, for people to play an early test build of Halo on an Xbox before either had it even been released. People who were able to play were left with quite mixed feelings on Halo. After the build that was displayed at E3 was running horribly, most of the time 
barely running at like 20 FPS and making it very hard to even enjoy the game. The team at Bungie came back from E3 feeling quite hopeful, but also really just tired and drained, looking forward to the many hours of crunch that would be required to finish the game by the November 15th release date. Due to the lack of time, many things were cut from the game. Things such as an open world environment, major parts of the plot, and even an online multiplayer component were cut because that Xbox Live thing, which is gonna get talked about at a later point, wasn't finished yet, so therefore it was all scrapped. Just four months before release, the Bungie team sat down and said, alright, we gotta have a talk about Halo's multiplayer. It ain't fucking good, chief. Because they weren't satisfied with the multiplayer mode, they literally scrapped the entire thing and rebuilt it from scratch with just four months before release. The studio had some members of the team who came from the defunct Bungie West team begin development on Halo multiplayer after they had come back from making another game known as Ani, or Oni. I don't honestly know how to pronounce the name of the game, I think it's Ani. If I'm wrong, I'm sure somebody will let me know, but moving on. In fact, some of the developers slept in the fucking office throughout the last few months of development just to make sure the game would be done by release. Now, let me just take a second to ask a simple question. Where the fuck did these type of developers go? The developers that were so passionate about creating their game that they literally gave the, all of their fucking time and energy just to creating this vision that they had. Don't get me wrong, I'm not sure that this kind of commitment is mentally healthy for a person, but when it comes to modern games, especially the AAA titles, this type of commitment is unheard of nowadays. I also understand that crunch is still very much a thing in the gaming industry, and many developers are overworked and very much underpaid, but I'm talking about the good type of crunch. The crunch that a developer chooses to do because they want to create that perfect vision of what they want to create. I, I don't know why I'm still going on this rant, but let's just... Fuck it, leave it as it is. The new multiplayer mode would now allow for up to two player split screen on the Halo campaign and use the system link feature to play on LAN, aka local area network, aka the latest animal news, to play local multiplayer with up to 16 people. This was truly one of the peaks of local multiplayer, and especially for the fact that this is still in 2001. The fact that you can have four Xboxes hooked up with four players on each one is mind-boggling and insane because we have really just digressed from that and we've went backwards because nowadays local multiplayer is gone it is dead and i'm a real sad boy about that i remember back in the day playing local multiplayer with my friends but anyways moving on ctf at midnight, November 15th, Bill Gates handed out the first Xbox console and told the guy that was getting it that he would cover it, and the guy said, Well, thank you, Billy boy. Along with the launch of the Xbox, Halo Combat Evolved finally made its way into the public and was a success both financially and in the public eye. Two months following the release of Halo, it was revealed that more than 50% of all Xbox owners also bought a copy of Halo, making it pretty much the main title for the Xbox. And the game was given universal acclaim by critics, with people like Metacritic giving the game a 97 out of 100, a near-perfect score. Just after five months of release, the game had sold a million copies, and by July of 2003, it had sold nearly three million copies. Halo is a game that I will forever hold dearly in my heart as one of the games that were just before my time, but god damn it, I have made some amazing memories with this game. I remember when I was way younger, my cousin Jacob, or as y'all may know him, Calc, had an original Xbox, which I also did, but I was like five, so I didn't have Halo, because my dad was like, no fucking violence. Anyways, I remember him and my other cousins would all play games together in his tiny ass little room, while the rest of my family would be out back having a fucking Halloween or a Christmas or any other holiday, I could, fucking Kwanzaa party, I don't know. And one of those games was Halo. And Jacob is a man that has really introduced me to many games when I was younger. And Halo was one of those gems that to this day, I still play the fuck out of. I remember back when I still went to public high school, before this whole pandemic shit started, I had two really sick ass teachers. 
One of them was named Mr. Boggs, and the other was Mr. Atkinson, but we called him Aki. Sometimes he called himself Wacky Aki, because he was a little wacky guy, but you get what I mean. And at this school, someone had put the files of the PC port of Halo on the school's network share, and whenever we were done with work in these classes, me and like 10 to 15 other kids would load in the Slayer on Wizard, and I would absolutely fucking destroy everyone in class. And I'm not trying to boost my ego, or anything like that. I swear, I was the king of this shit. On some days, we would even get my one teacher, Mr. Boggs, who had played Halo back in the day, to join in on the games, and he would be talking the most shit to everyone across the class, and it was the best fucking thing in the entire world. Days like that were just the best days in school. More teachers need to be like Mr. Boggs and Mr. Atkinson. Respect to both of them. At the end of the day, Halo 1 will always hold a very special place in my heart. Not only for the amazing memories I have of absolutely destroying everyone in my classes, but also for the fact that if it wasn't for Halo 1, many of my favorite games like Call of Duty wouldn't be a thing today. Also, I know I didn't mention him at all throughout this video, but Halo also gave birth to one of the most infamous characters in video game history. I don't even have to say his fucking name. You already know him, the big boy, the man himself, the Spartan number 117, the master motherfucking chief. Nowadays, we really take for granted the FPS style gameplay because it's without a doubt the most saturated genre in gaming right now. And because it's the most saturated, only few modern AAA games that take on the FPS style actually feel like they have some quality to me. And don't even get me fucking started on Battle Royale games, cause that's a whole other topic for a whole other fucking time. One of the few games that were recently released that I enjoy is Halo Infinite. I know, a newer Halo game being praised in a game fucking video about Halo 1. I know, I'm a fucking sinner. Lord bless. Alright? While Halo Infinite is far from perfect, I respect the fuck out of 343 for still sticking to that classic Halo multiplayer that Bungie mastered while adding small things to the games, like the grappling hook, which is possibly more fun than messing with your teacher's smart board so that when he goes to write Y equals MX plus B on it, it doesn't work, then he has to do the little recalibration thingy where you take the marker and you tap it in the center of the crosshairs and all my gamer brain sees is someone doing fucking target practice and in my head i hear the killing, killing spree sound you, you, you know what i'm talking about i how do you guys does anybody here remember smart boards those big ass little white boards and they're all fucking smart and shit okay moving on i guess what i'm trying to say is whether you think halo 1 is one of the best games of all time or not there is no denying that if this game wasn't released modern day gaming would not be what it is Halo 1 revolutionized console FPS and inspired the creation of some of my favorite games of all time. And for that, Halo 1 will always hold a special place in my heart. But not as special as Halo 2. If I were a rich man, all day long I'd bliddy biddy bum If I were a wealthy man Oi!